friends and welcome to my channel. I am Angelina Isaac and today we will be learning about the scapula also called the shoulder blade. This diagram shows the posterior aspect of the body. The scapula is a flat triangular bone placed on the posterolateral aspect of the thoracic cage extending from the level of the second rib to the seventh rib. It provides support to the muscles of the forelimb and an articulation for the humerus at the glenoid cavity. It is joined to the clavicle in front. Now let us look at the features of the scapula. The scapula has two surfaces, the dorsal surface or the posterior surface, the coastal surface or the anterior surface. It has three borders the superior border, the medial border, the lateral border, three processes, the spinous process, the acromion process and the coracoid process. It has three angles, the superior angle, inferior angle, the lateral angle, also called the glenoid angle. Now let's look at the coastal and dorsal surfaces in detail. The coastal surface is concave and it faces the thoracic cage. It has three longitudinal ridges and it gives attachment to the intermuscular septa. There is another thick ridge adjoining the lateral border. This part of the bone is almost rod-like. It acts like a lever for the action of the serratus anterior in the overhead abduction of the arm. I will explain this later on. The dorsal surface gives attachment to the spine of the scapula which divides the surface into a smaller supraspinous fossa and a larger infraspinous fossa. The two fossa are connected to each other by the spinoglenoid notch that you see right here. It is situated lateral to the root of the spine. Now why is it named the spinoglenoid notch? Because it is situated between the spine of the scapula and the glenoidal angle. Now moving on to the borders. The superior border is thin and shorter. At the root of the coracoid process, it presents a suprascapular notch. The lateral border is thick. It presents an infraglenoid tubercle at its upper end. The medial border is thin. It extends from the superior angle to the inferior angle. The angles include the superior angle, the inferior angle and the lateral angle. The superior angle is covered by the trapezius. The inferior angle is covered by the latissimus dorsi and it lies just opposite to the superior angle. It moves forwards round the chest when the arm is abducted. The lateral angle or the glenoid angle faces laterally and away from the body. Moving on to the processes of the scapula, the spine or the spinous process is a triangular plate of bone that divides the dorsal surface of the scapula into a small supraspinous fossa and a large infraspinous fossa. The spinous process has three borders and two surfaces. The borders include the anterior border which is attached to the dorsal surface of the scapula, the posterior border which has two lips, the upper lip and the lower lip, the lateral border which forms the spinoglenoid notch, two surfaces, the superior surface and the inferior surface. The acromion process is a continuation of the spinous process. It has two borders, the medial border and the lateral border. It has two surfaces, the superior surface and an inferior surface. The medial border of the acromion process is continuous with the upper lip of the crest of the spine. The lateral border is continuous 
with the lower lip of the crest of the spine. The coracoid process is directed forwards and slightly laterally, that is away from the body. It is bent and finger-like. It is an atavistic type of epiphysis. Epiphysis is the growing part of a bone. Now how do we determine the side of this scapula? Basically, the spinous process should always face backwards. The glenoid cavity should face laterally, that is, away from the body. The lateral border is always thick, while the medial border is thin. So, by looking at this scapula, we come to the conclusion that this is the scapula of the right side. Before I begin with the attachments of the muscles, please note that the red color shows the origin of muscles, the blue color shows the insertion of muscles and the green color shows the attachments of joint capsules and ligaments. Now let's learn about the attachments of the scapula. First we'll discuss about the muscles. Looking at the coastal surface of the scapula, there is the subscapular fossa. It gives origin to the subscapularis muscle from its medial two-thirds. Now looking at the dorsal surface of the scapula, the supraspinous fossa gives origin to the supraspinatus muscle from its medial two-thirds. The infraspinous fossa gives origin to the infraspinatus from its medial two-thirds. Now looking at this diagram, the subscapularis muscle originates from the medial two-thirds of the coastal surface on the subscapular fossa. This is the supraspinatus muscle that originates from the medial two-thirds of the supraspinous fossa. This is the infraspinatus muscle that originates from the medial two-thirds of the infraspinous fossa. The superior border has a suprascapular notch. The inferior belly of the omohyoid originates near this notch right here. Now let's look at this diagram. The inferior belly of the omohyoid originates near the suprascapular notch of the upper border of the scapula. Now let's look at the attachments on the lateral border of the scapula. The teres minor originates by two slips from the upper two-thirds of the lateral border on its dorsal aspect. Now in this diagram, this is the teres minor. It originates from two slips from the upper two-thirds of the dorsal surface along the lateral border. The teres major originates from the lower one-third of the lateral border on its dorsal aspect. This is the teres major. It originates from the lower one-third of the dorsal aspect of the lateral border. Moving to the medial border, the coastal surface gives insertion to serratus anterior by various digitations. One digitation is from the superior angle to the root of the spine. Two digitations to the medial border and five digitations at the inferior angle of the scapula. In this diagram, these are the digitations of the serratus anterior. They are inserted along the medial border of the coastal surface of the scapula. The levator scapulae is inserted along the dorsal aspect of the medial border from the superior angle to the root of the spine. The rhomboidus minor is inserted at the root of the spine and the rhomboidus major is inserted between the root of the spine and the inferior angle. This is the levator scapulae. It is inserted along the dorsal aspect of the medial border from the superior angle to the root of the spine. This is the rhomboid minor. It is inserted into the medial border at the root of the spine. This is the rhomboid major. It is inserted into the medial border 
between the root of the spine and the inferior angle. The superior angle is covered by the trapezius. The inferior angle on its dorsal aspect gives origin to the latissimus dorsi. This is the latissimus dorsi. The inferior angle of the scapula gives origin to the latissimus dorsi. The inferior angle on its coastal aspect gives insertion to the five digitations of the serratus anterior which we had discussed earlier. The lateral angle gives attachment to the capsule of the shoulder joint. The supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of the biceps. The infraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of the triceps. This you see here is the glenoid cavity. And the green part marked here is the glenoid labrum, which will be discussed later. This is the long head of the biceps brachii. It originates from the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. This is the triceps brachii. It originates from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. Now moving on to the attachments on the processes. Firstly, the spinous process has an upper surface and a an lower surface which we had discussed earlier. The upper surface gives origin to the supraspinatus. The lower surface gives origin to the infraspinatus. The posterior border has an upper lip. The upper lip of the spinous process gives insertion to the trapezius. The lower lip gives origin to the deltoid. This is the trapezius. It is inserted into the upper lip of the crest of the spine. This is the deltoid. It originates from the lower lip of the crest of the spine. Looking at the acromion process, as we had seen earlier, the medial border is a continuation of the upper lip of the crest of the spine. Therefore, it gives insertion to the trapezius. The lateral border is a continuation of the lower lip of the crest of the spine. Therefore, it gives origin to the deltoid. Now let's look at the attachments on the coracoid process. The coracobrachialis originates from the medial part of the tip of the coracoid process. The short head of the biceps brachii originates from the lateral part of the tip of the coracoid process. This is the coracobrachialis. It originates from the medial part of the tip of the coracoid process. This is the short head of the biceps brachii. It originates from the lateral part of the tip of the coracoid process. The pectoralis minor is inserted into the medial border and superior surface of the coracoid process. This is the pectoralis minor. It is inserted into the medial border and superior surface of the coracoid process. Now let's look at the attachments of the ligaments on the scapula. There are five ligaments. The first is a coracoacromial ligament. The coracoacromial ligament is attached to the lateral border of the coracoid process and the medial border of the tip of the acromion process that is right here between the green and the red you see. It is attached in this manner. The second ligament is the coracohumeral ligament. It is attached to the root of the coracoid process. The coracoclavicular ligament is attached to the coracoid process. The transverse ligament bridges the suprascapular notch and converts it into a foramen which transmits the suprascapular nerve and the suprascapular vessels lie above the ligament. The spinoglenoid ligament bridges the spinoglenoid notch. The suprascapular nerves and vessels pass deep into this notch. Now let's look at the joint capsules. There are two joint capsules that are attached to the scapula. The margin of the glenoid cavity 
gives attachment to the capsule of the shoulder joint and also to the glenoid labrum. The humerus articulates right here. The margin of the facet on the medial aspect of the acromion process gives attachment to the capsule of the acromioclavicular joint. Now let me brief about the muscles that take origin and insert on the scapula. The muscles that origin include the subscapularis right here, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the inferior belly of the omohyoid, the teres minor, the teres major, latissimus dorsi, the long head of the biceps, the long head of the triceps, the deltoid, coracobrachialis and the biceps brachii. Now the muscles that insert into the scapula include the serratus anterior, the levator scapulae, the rhomboidus minor, rhomboidus major, the trapezius, and the pectoralis minor. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.